Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Before we get started with our wonderful, famous, esteemed guest, I want to remind everybody out there in ATP land, if you haven't subscribed yet to our text message alert system, please do that now. Simply send the message truth, T-R-U-T-H, and put it in your phone to the number 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for free to get all of our content, including today's show, right in the palm of your hand, absolutely free. So let's bring on Will Johnson. He is the founder of Unite America First. He is a very famous political pundit, advisor, and person that will give you opinions that you will just love. He's a good friend of ATP. Welcome back, Will Johnson. I'm glad to be here, Barry. I've got some really important questions. The news is breaking like crazy. Let's start with the first big one. Uh, Black Lives Matter is now running a campaign. (laughs) This is hard to believe, Will where they are saying that white families should not send their children to the 50 best rated schools in America, I mean colleges, because those spots should all go to black kids to make up for slavery. So they're writing letters asking parents to pick less highly rated schools so those schools will fully open their doors to black children to make up for the sin of white privilege and of course, slavery. What is your thought that we have to, if we went, if we abide by this goofball campaign, that children of white families are atoning for the sins of their great, 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 great grandparents and have to go to a school of, well, secondary ranking. What are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind are, is BLM going to pay for all of these students to go to these pristine schools? Are they going to fork out the money? I don't think so. I think all they're wanting to do is get white people to stop going to the schools. And then what's going to end up happening are these schools, if, if, if that was actually to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. They're wasting their time, personally, my personal opinion. You may get a few, you know, white liberals out there. Oh, yeah, this is wonderful. We should do this. But no, for the most part, let's just, let's just go along with the, that they actually do pull all their white students, the white children out of these schools. What's going to end up happening? All of these schools that have these students currently in them, they're going to go under. They're going to go completely under. And the schools are going to be like reaching out to the government for assistance, for bailout money. And all it's going to do is create problems that it's not even currently there. Now, if BLM really, truly wanted to help out the Black community, stop attacking the white community. Why don't you make it possible? I mean, to my understanding, BLM has taken in over, or over if not close to a billion dollars don't you think they could take maybe 20 million, 30 million and create and build a school? I mean, why wouldn't they do that? And then they could take another, you know, 15, 20 million and pay the staff, the faculty. Why not do that? Why not? And, and at the same time, you know, if you were, if you say that you want equality and you want equal for everything to be equal, don't limit the school to just black people, make it a school that you can teach everybody everything. But see, they have a different agenda. They have an agenda to tear down what the system is in this nation because the CRT is not working the way they wanted it to. See, CRT is to make white kids look bad or anyone who's not black or anyone who's black or Asian or yellow or brown or what have you to look at white people as the, the wrongdoers in the country, if not just the country, but throughout the world. And a lot of people are catching on to that. So they're just having another tactic going after white and white liberals, basically, to put, have their kids pull out of school. And if any white liberal out there, Barry, that goes along with this, I truly see it that they hate their children because you should always put your children first and their education should come first, regardless of any political idea you know, ideology. Well said, Will Johnson, well said. So let's go further down the crazy road, shall we? Washington, D.C. has just elected a convicted murderer who is in prison for the last 26 years 
for assassinating in public someone he didn't like, shot him, I think, five or six times in the head. Really a horrific crime. He's still in jail. Um, the homicide rate in Washington, D.C. is off the charts. And now the city has, the city of D.C., the, the district, has made it legal for not only convicted people in prison to be elected, but get this, all the felons in prison are voting are voting as well. So the new public official, a guy named Joel Castone, has been in prison 26 years. All the candidates running were in the same prison. What is going on? Is it okay that people who commit horrible crimes will can vote from their jail cell? You know, let me let me say this. I, as you know, me personally, I believe that if you're convicted of a crime and you go to prison and you you spend your time X amount of time, whatever it may be, and you come out, I think to you should be if you if you paid your due, I think you should be welcomed back into society, permitting that you don't do anything wrong. I mean, because you'll go right back. But I think people, we should welcome people back to society. They should have something to look forward to once they would get out of prison then I think people should be able to personally vote. And if you want to run for political office, I think you should be able to, because, hey, you did this, you paid the penalty. But this is this is beyond just that. They're, they're, and, and see, the Democrats are very conniving. They're very sneaky, right? So, of course, they go into these prison systems and they, and they tell all these people, hey, you can run for political office. You're going to get X, Y, Z. While you're here, you have some kind of authority outside and you continue to do all of this. I mean, so what people don't realize is that it's the same party the same policies that the Democrats that put most of these people in jail. And now the Democrats are coming to them saying that, hey, we'll do something to help you out because, you know, we put you here. They, they leave that part out, of course. But this is completely insane that someone who's been, you know, in prison for 26 years, a known murderer, and then they're giving this person a position of authority. I mean, there's really something wrong with this. I, whole I think picture. his whole cell block voted for him. You know, he probably <laughs> campaigned in the in the exercise yard. Vote for me, you'll get more cigarettes. And I'm and I'm willing to bet that he's a Rexer Democrat. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to bet. All right. Well, I've got a I've got a nonpartisan question for you. Uh, there's a a naval naval rear admiral, a doctor named Ronnie Jackson, uh, who was President Obama's doctor when. Obama was president. He became White House physician when Trump was president. And Ronnie Jackson has just gone public with a startling series of commentary, Will, saying that he believes if he administered a test to President Biden, similar to the test given to President Trump, a, a mental acuity test, um, the test was passed with flying colors, literally, by uh, Trump, he thinks Biden would fail. And he said that the cognitive decline in Joe Biden is so extreme, so obvious, and so detrimental to the national security of the United States. He says he thinks Biden will probably resign soon. And if not, that the 25th Amendment should be invoked by the cabinet to remove him. So my question to you, is Ronnie Jackson right, Will Johnson, that uh, Biden should be forced out of office due to his mental decline? You know what? Um, yes. Short answer, yes. Um, bad answer <laughs> is what follows. <laughs> you know, I, we've, we've noticed that Biden, even before the November election in 2020, that he was declining. People had video after video. We all joked about it. We all talked about it. We all noticed that there was something wrong with him. And they continued to put him out there on the forefront. And the main reason why I think they put him out there is because they say, okay, well, you know what? We don't need him to have his wits about him because we'll control him. So 
I truly believe that, you know, he probably will be removed. And I've said this probably before the end of this year, I give it to the end of this year that he'll, you know, that he'll step down, he'll be out. But at the same time, they may just keep him in there and just, you know, have him do bed rest. And then they'll just talk and they'll just make decisions from for him while he's in the bed. Only because they can control the outcome of what they want. And we see well, that across the board on many, on many occasions. Here's an outcome that you may not like, because I know you. If he if he gets removed, Will, Kamala Harris is president of the United States. So have we jumped from the frying pan into the fire at that point? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, the fire is extremely hot. And we think it's bad right now. We think it's bad right now under Biden. It's going to get extremely bad under Harris. And I, and I say this not just for Christians, but for Jews, for anybody that, you know, believes in God that believes in our freedom, believes in our sovereignty, believes that, you know, boys should be boys and girls should be girls, who those of us who believe in our nation and reality, it's going to be extremely bad for us. And everyone is, that has a twisted mind and that goes along with this tyranny that they're implementing onto all of us is going to be a different story. You think the lockdown that they're talking about is going to be a soft lockdown. If she's in control, it's going to be martial law lockdown. And that's just my opinion. Now, I, I don't have any issues being wrong, Barry. I welcome the fact that I could be wrong and I want to be wrong. But I, I can see, you know, you're smiling on your face and you're nodding and you're like, yes, everyone sees it. And it's not, it's, it's like, I'm it's not, not a secret, Will. I know. It's not a secret. <laughs> exactly. It's not a secret. Everyone sees the same picture. Everyone sees the same outcome. And, it, and it's completely crazy. And, and on top of that, then we have these woke generals. We have woke police officers that, you know, are going against their whole fabric of, you know, what they've stood for, the oath that they took upon themselves. And Harris, she's going to she's gonna bring in... Um, She's going to usher in tyranny that the country never thought they would see in our lifetime. Well, tell people where they can find out about you and follow you. You've got such great opinions. Well, I made it actually easy. If you go to UAF.media, you can find me everywhere by going there. It directs you to my website, UAF.media. It stands for Unite America First. So UAF.media, you can find me everywhere there. Perfect. Even on I ATP. Advise... Say again? <laughs> Even on ATP. <laughs> I love it. And for those of you on ATP, sign up. I told you how. Text 88202. Uh, send the message truth. You'll be signed up. You'll get all of Will Johnson. We got him on all the time. Thanks, Will, for coming on. Sure appreciate you. And thank you all out there in ATP land for ATP Report. Thanks for coming on with us. I'm Barry Newsbaum. 